Hello, buddy. Today we're going to do another security thing that you should never do. But this one is something I was sort of personally curious about. And actually, while doing the research for this video, I learned quite a bit. What we're going to do today is join an insecure Wi Fi network. Now, the first misconception, I, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who thought this, is an insecure Wi Fi network is not just a network with no password, an open network, but also any network where the password is publicly available or just insecure. Because if the attacker, as I'm going to demonstrate, has the password, there is actually no difference between an insecure and a protected, even with a secure or password. The only exception to this is if the network, instead of using WPA, personal uses the enterprise version, which I think gives every user a password. But it is very, very uncommon. The other misconception I had is with those captive portals that you sometimes see on public Wi-Fi networks, those provide absolutely no security to end users, and you would never need to finish one in order to sniff a network, which gets to the third thing I did not know about packet sniffing, which is that packet sniffing does not involve connecting to a Wi-Fi network. It simply involves setting your wireless adapter to monitor mode and putting in the frequency of the network. There is no connection required although you will not obtain much useful information without the password. But there's one exception to that. So, for example, if a network's form of security is a MAC address filter, which is entirely useless, you can simply find the MAC address of any connected computer and spoof it from the first thing. Now, once you enter the SSID and password, and remember, it's got to be done in reverse. I made that mistake when I first tried to do this in Wireshark. You will now, in addition to the network packets, be able to see the same packets you would on your local Ethernet connection, all of the different uh, network packets. And because most websites use HTTPS these days, this is the one place where you are sort of thrown a bone. But there's a problem with that, which is DNS, although this is changing, is unencrypted. So even if you can't see the contents of every website and everything being sent to every website, what you are able to see is the name of every website, the domain name, and you could get an idea. And if your victim happens to connect to a personal site, you might learn a bit more. There's the possibility that your victim will end up connecting to a HTTP site or that a HTTP site will end up somewhere in the middle, which could lead to additional information being available to the sniffer, including the entire contents of the site and any information sent to the HTTP site. Now, remember our old friend, the captive portal I mentioned earlier? Well, a lot of those will not be properly encrypted, and this is another serious vulnerability. If you've ever heard a VPN sponsor segment or have just ever wondered if it's true, what I'm now going to do is connect to a VPN. I use a NordVPN, I'm not sponsored by them, but let's just see. Is it true, as a VPN company says, that if you connect to a VPN, all of your traffic is encrypted and nobody will be able to spy on it, even on an unsecure Wi Fi network, or of course, if they had intentionally enabled a wiretap into your activity? So you can see in the DNS some of my various uh, uh, connections going out to log into my Google account so that I can get into my NordVPN account. Now, of course, it is only in the DNS you cannot see the HTTP requests thanks to HTTPS, but that still provides a reasonable amount of information. And the moment that we hit the connect button, the DNS feed goes dead. And now we can see what's happening if we go over to the UDP feed. We can see these wire guard entries, but unlike the DNS feed, they provide absolutely no information of value if you were trying to spy on someone. All we can see is roughly the size of the packets and that they are going from a local IP address and back to a remote IP address, which if you were to put into Whois, you would simply see as a part of NordVPN. You cannot get any idea what your, your victim is doing, where they are going. So that does demonstrate that 
While I would not say everyone needs a VPN all the time, using a VPN on public Wi-Fi is probably a good idea. And now for a demonstration, I'm going to log in to the bait insecure WordPress site that I've set up for another video. And what we're going to do is we're going to see what we can actually see if we log into a site that doesn't use HTTPS. So you type in your admin and your password. And this is a realistic enough example because if someone had a personal blog and it doesn't have HTTPS, this can happen. And now we have sent the unencrypted data over the wire, and now we can find out how much trouble we've caused. So we can go back to our Wireshark, and we can type in the IP address so that we know what we're looking for. Uh, of course, I'm not going to actually show the IP address for this server because it is intended to be a test, not a capture the flag challenge. We can immediately see that we went to WP login, and we are probably going to find what we're after in one of these pages. And here we go. Application X form URL unencoded. And if we if we go in here, oh my, uh, we've got the password, the username, and the submit. So now, if you were going to your WordPress or any site that doesn't use HTTPS, now you have a catastrophic problem because they got your credentials. And just like a data breach, if that password happened to be reused anywhere that was secure, that they can now try it. And thanks to the DNS requests, they've now got a list of sites that you are likely to have an account on. So my advice is if you're going to use an insecure Wi-Fi network and you're going to log into anything, absolutely anything, I would suggest using a VPN. I'm not sponsored by VPN companies. Use any VPN you want, or um, you can also get a VPS, install WireGuard on it, and have your own private VPN if you're concerned about the VPN company spying on you. These are all good tips. One other thing I should point out is the password being plain text is not the only security risk. Another problem is, of course, if you've seen any of my videos about stealers, you know about cookies and session stealing. Every request to an authenticated page is going to contain your cookie. Here we go. And your session. So even if they don't get your password, because you're already logged in, they can steal your session cookies and accomplish the exact same task. So that is going to be all for this video. I hope it was helpful. Maybe you learned something. Uh, hopefully you've got an idea, a better idea about Wi-Fi safety. And I was kind of surprised about some of the things that are still a problem, but that was just my thoughts. Thanks for watching.